Back in 2011, I was involved in a car accident. At the time, I broke my left leg so badly that I needed to undergo multiple surgeries. During my recovery, I experienced constant and severe pain. For more than six months, I was unable to walk normally. To relieve my pain, my doctor prescribed pain medication and advised me to use it as directed. When I first started taking them, I thought the painkillers were really effective in relieving my pain. But as time went on, I began to become dependent on the painkillers. I found that if I didn't take my pain medication regularly, my pain would become unbearable again. It was an ordeal for me. For a while, I tried to stop taking the medication in hopes of being able to stop relying on pain medication. However, I soon found that this was difficult to do. In the process of stopping the medication, I felt like a drug addict. My mind kept telling me that I needed the medication to relieve the pain. Now, I still need to use pain medication to control my pain. Some people may think I get high when I take these pain medications, but that is not the case. When I take these painkillers, I don't feel too strongly. Instead, I could smell this medication every time. It was a disgusting taste that made me feel very uncomfortable every time I swallowed it. One morning, I had a very bad cough. I thought I might have the flu. Therefore, I decided to take a sick day off to rest at home. I took some cold medicine, but the next day, I didn't feel better. My condition became more serious. I felt so weak and tired that I could hardly get out of bed. At night, the pain in my left leg also became worse. I had taken painkillers on time, but they didn't seem to have any effect. Even though I felt very nauseous, I took the rest of the painkillers in the hope that they would relieve the pain. It was very frustrating to have to deal with the illness and pain alone during this time. I hoped I would be able to get back to health soon. After about an hour, my head was spinning and I was having a very hard time breathing. I felt very uncomfortable, as if I was submerged in water. I quickly called the emergency number and told them about my symptoms. When I arrived at the hospital, I was examined by a doctor. The doctor told me that I just had a bad case of the flu and advised me to get plenty of rest and maintain adequate water intake. He also gave me some antibiotics to help me fight the virus. On the morning of the third day, I felt my condition was getting worse and I could barely hear in my ears. My mother also came to my house and saw that I was in very bad condition and took me to the local emergency room. The nurse examined me physically and advised me that I needed to go to a larger hospital. On the way to the other hospital, my breathing became very difficult. I thought it was the oxygen mask, so I took it off. The nurse immediately put the oxygen mask back on me. I remember that nurse was so upset that every time I tried to take off my mask, she promptly put it back on me. As I lay in the hospital bed, I knew the doctors and nurses were doing their best to resuscitate me. But the content of their conversations was not promising. My vision began to blur, and the bright colors gradually dimmed and eventually turned into darkness. I began to feel my body become lighter, as if I were floating in the air. I realized I was leaving my body, and it was a wonderful feeling. I suddenly felt much better. My breathing became easier and I was able to hear sounds around me. Unfortunately, the peace didn't last long. I heard a sound that sounded like white noise from the TV. But this sound was harsher and more confusing. It got louder and louder, and I felt like I was falling into a sea of noise. I wanted to return to the real world. But I felt like I was being pulled into a black hole, and there was no way for me to escape. 
The screams that were getting louder and louder, and my mind started to become confused. I began to feel fear. Hell was so real. It was filled with endless evil and fear. As I stepped into this horrible place, I was surrounded by a strong stench that made me feel sick. I tried to breathe fresh air, but everything around me was so dirty and disgusting. All around me, I saw many horrible things. The creatures looked like snakes, and they were very large in number. They were constantly wrapping themselves around me. Their scales rubbed against my skin, causing me to feel tingling and discomfort. No matter how much I struggled and resisted, they never seemed to stop. It was an endless cycle, and I could not escape the torture. Then, I appeared in a red space again. At first, the color was relatively light, but soon, the red began to become darker and darker. Everything around me was red, only in different shades of color. The smell of decay permeated the surroundings. I tried to find my way out. However, no matter where I went, I could not leave this place. There was not the slightest sign of lifelessness in this world. I couldn't see any plants or animals, not even a hint of wind. It was a dead world that made me feel overwhelmingly lonely and desperate. Suddenly, I heard moans of pain and screams of terror. These sounds filled my surroundings and made me feel very panic. Here, there was a heat wave in the air, just like the feeling you get when you turn on the oven. I walked in the direction of the sound, and I tried to find the others. All I could hear were screams, but I couldn't see anyone. Every step I took was hard. When I got to the edge of a cliff, I saw some monsters below. It felt like those horrible monsters were waiting for me. Their faces were twisted and their sharp teeth were exposed. I tried to walk around the beasts, but every movement I made alerted them. I felt that they could sense my fear. As I moved, their eyes followed me. I felt like they were devouring my soul. The sound of these monsters is also terrifying. They made hoarse growling noises, like they were waiting for me to fall. Just as I was feeling desperate, a bright light appeared above my head. It shone with a dazzling light. I looked up and saw a huge angel who flapped his huge wings. I knew I had been saved. The angel held out her hand ready to lead me out of here. I followed her lead and felt an overwhelming sense of peace and reassurance. Eventually, we arrived at a beautiful place. The air smelled like flowers, and I knew I was saved. The angel turned to me and waved, then disappeared into the light. I had come to a place where there was no suffering or pain. This should be heaven. Suddenly, I saw a young lady. She was walking toward me, and she was wearing a gorgeous white robe. As she approached, I was surprised to find that she was my grandmother. Here she looked to be in her thirties. My grandmother told me that this was heaven, a place free from pain and trouble. She gently stroked my hair. Then, gave me a warm hug. She told me that my mission was not over and that I had to go back. She assured me that she would be with me no matter where I was. Finally, she disappeared in the light. Suddenly, my soul returned to the hospital. I saw myself lying in a hospital bed. My mother was holding my hand tightly. Over and over again, she said, you have to wake up, you can't leave us. Her voice was full of worry. I knew I was in extreme danger. The doctors told my mother that my life was in danger and my chances of survival were very slim. The doctors advised my mother to tell my other loved ones to prepare for the worst. My body had been suffering from severe oxygen deprivation, 
which had been going on for several days. All of my organs were failing and my health condition became worse. Upon hearing the news, my mother burst into tears. I could feel her desperation and helplessness. I realized that I had to get back into my body as soon as possible. I tried many times without success. I closed my eyes and began to confess to God, pleading with Him to give me another chance. After a while, I felt a surge of energy gathering inside me. A bright light was emanating from my soul. This energy was sending me back into my body. I finally re-entered my body. My breathing became clear. My hearing and vision also slowly began to return to normal. When I woke up again, it was the afternoon of the next day. The sound of machines was all around me. I tried to sit up. But my body still felt weak. I had an oxygen mask on and a tube in my throat. As time went on, I got better. I was transferred to a general ward. Half a month later, I left the hospital. I kept wondering if I would have been able to return here that day without the presence of an angel. I realized that life is so fragile. I began to pay more attention to my health and improve my lifestyle. I knew that the angel's presence was God's forgiveness and mercy to me. The first week after I was discharged from the hospital, I still felt pain in my left leg. But I began to try to restrain myself from using pain medication. However, such attempts soon ended in failure. I became increasingly anxious and restless. I became unable to concentrate and even began to worry that this condition would continue. It was at this time that I met a woman who is now my wife. She used to suffer from severe alcohol dependency, but she eventually managed to kick it. She told me that I needed to find my inner strength in order to truly stop being dependent on painkillers. After talking and thinking with her for a long time, I gradually understood the meaning. I began to learn to accept my pain and discomfort instead of blindly relying on the painkillers to make me feel better. I began to learn to use other methods to relieve the pain, such as meditation and yoga. After three months of hard work, I gradually overcame my dependence on painkillers. My body began to adapt to the pain, and I became stronger and more confident.